Okay, so I'm gonna get started. It looks like uh, we're a couple minutes past. So if everyone can just get a part on the spot. Uh, in the high knees, get your arms swinging a little bit. Uh, I got a comment yesterday from one of our participants that my sh black shoes were hard to see my feet, so I changed my nice colorful runners for everybody. And again, like I said, I'm gonna do the same format as we did yesterday. A bit of a warm up, do some side swings, uh, followed by some mobility exercises, but I always find a lot of people sitting around with their butts these days. A little bit of extra mobility is not a bad thing. And then we'll do some strength exercises and I'll progress again three variations of the same exercise. Feel free to stop on the one where you find it most challenging. You don't need to force or push through. So um, just kind of stay at the level where you feel comfortable. Again, if we're doing some kind of single leg things, which we will be doing a bit today, make sure that if you're doing a single leg exercise, you are standing close to the wall. Balancing, I'm um, using a chair, maybe getting close to a door frame or something like that, just so you don't feel like you're gonna fall over. Okay, so again, we'll start with some mobility. Um, I'll just back up a smidge. Um, I'm just gonna do a side lunge to start. And these are more just a warm up exercise, it's not a hold and stretch, it's just moving through range. Uh, I see in the waiting room. I'm gonna add a bit of an arm stretch to the side, so you feel a bit of those cracks. <laughs> I see that waiting person, I'm just let them in. Okay, hopefully not in pain. Like I said, this shouldn't be a painful movement. It should actually feel kind of nice. Okay. Um, this is an exercise that I didn't do myself personally because my back gets a little bit sore from time to time. If you're not feeling it, just bend your back and stop. So what I'm going to do is basically roll my spine down, so from my neck, move down towards my chin, curl my upper back. So this is basically a horrendous posture that we always never recommend as a physio typically, but actually I find it is a natural movement that all of us do, and it should be something that we should be able to do. So basically I'm just curling my back down, reaching to the ground, and then opposite, rolling back up. And again, I kind of think about the segments, moving segment by segment. Um, so I'm just kind of curling my back up and down. And again, if you feel dizzy, you feel you're gonna fall over, I would just say let's stay, stay, um, stay on this one. But I just find it's a great exercise, um, just to kind of get that back and warm up a little bit. If you want to add a little bit of overhead reach at the end. Feels quite good for myself, especially with all the sitting. I see some people waiting to get in there. Okay, uh, let's get on to our hands and knees. So we'll do some back exercises for again mobility. I'm gonna do a variation of that with some of those people that weren't able to do that because of back problems. Uh, this cat cow again, so we'll do your knees. As I do that, I'm gonna arch up my mid back and then tilt my pelvis, so I'm kind of tilting my tail. And then opposite again, I'm going to stick my butt out, drop my shoulders, and then look up. And then we're just going to repeat that back and forth a few times. And again, I try to think about my segments of my back moving one at a time. It's kind of a funny concept for a lot of people. So if you don't really get the concept, just try to move through the movements. But I kind of do try to think one segment moves at a time, and then kind of like moving down my back, and then opposite moving up my back as I go up. One more. And again, pain is not something that we're trying to force through. If you feel a bit of discomfort, move through that range that you feel comfortable moving and stop if it starts to get to the point where it doesn't feel right. Listen to your body. Okay, next is our thread the needle. So I kind of do the similar exercises here. Um, I'm going to go four point. I'm going to use my hand, let's so my left hand for now. I'm going to reach it through my armpit. And I'm trying to go kind of 90 degrees out from my shoulder. And then opposite to that, I roll out and reach up to the sky as I can. Again, I'm kind of eyeballs follow my thumbs, so my eyes are following my thumbs to so get a bit of that neck rotation as well. I kind of like to tell, say that the proud chest, so keep your chest tall. Don't let your chest collapse, if that makes sense. Um, and again, usually I get a bit of creaking and cracking in my back as I do this. It does kind of work my shoulder as well, both the one that I'm leaning on and the one that I'm moving, so 
again, listen to your body if you do have any shoulder issues and or back issues, so it might be a little bit tender, so just take it to the raise that we feel like you comfortably handle. I'll go to the other question. I'll stay on this side so you can see back into your arms. Um, and again, I'm following my eyes to my thumb. And again, you may be able to go farther than me, you may not. Just take it to the point where you feel comfortable. And again, remember that tall chest. Arms should be about 90 degrees up from your body. That's pretty important. So try to keep that happening as well. One more. Okay. Moving on, so we're going to have one leg up, back, one knee back. Um, it's a similar movement, but we're going to add a little bit more rotation to get a bit more hip activation and groin stretch. So again, I'm going to reach through my arm. So my left hand is past my right foot is up and my right arm is one moving. I move my right arm through my left armpit and then rotate up and over. And again, I'm trying to keep that arm kind of perpendicular 90 degrees up my body, especially this upward movement. Um, should be straight up, that tall chest happening, my eyeballs are following my thumb with the moving hand, just to allow that rotation to happen. And again, if this is not comfortable, just repeat the previous exercise that you were able to do. Um, if you want, you can just march on the spot, uh, but just sit it out if um, you're not able to follow exactly what we're doing. And that especially holds true for the um, strength exercise we're going to do today. Again, I'm just trying to cater to a large audience. I'm not really sure where people are at with their strength and abilities. So I basically just try to give a little bit for everybody. And that sometimes is, is pretty challenging for some people. So just take it to the level where you can handle. Let's go one more. And I never really count, so it's probably for those people that are really even right about counting. <laughs> With this, actually, I didn't really mention, but that arm or my hand, my planted hand, should be directly below my shoulder. So try not to get like, too far away from yourself. Um, that's all I can think of. So I'm just going to move on to some of our strength exercises. Our first exercise will be uh, a burpee. And like I said, I'm going to start off easy. The burpees are pretty challenging. Um, again, you're going to sit it out if you're feeling uncomfortable with it. Um, but my first variation will be uh, basically a, kind of a push up leg position. But instead of a full burpee right now, I'm just going to start with kind of marching on the spot from a push up. So I'm just having my hands directly planted below my, my shoulders. If you're fine on my wrists, this is not comfortable to me in that kind of really flex position on my wrists. Or actually, sorry, that would actually be an extension if you want to be correct. You can go from the, the knuckles. Just make sure you're making a tight knuckle or a tight fist. Um, you don't have a sloppy fist for this one. And we'll just do a few of these just to kind of get that heart rate up a bit. Um, and again, my shoulders and my hands, my arms are in nice straight alignment. So again, your hands should be directly below your shoulder joint. You can even switch up your feet a little bit if you just want to get out a bit of variation. I'm going to use a band for an exercise coming up, not yet. I'm not saying you need to have a band, but if you want to grab a band and have one, go ahead and find that piece of equipment. If you don't, you don't need it. It's just something that I'm going to throw in just for a little fun. Okay, let's take a second to breathe. I'll just flip around so you can see the opposite side of what I'm doing. Next progression of that towards a burpee, so again, we're going to get to a burpee in a minute, um, is I call them donkey kicks. Um, so again, if you aren't able to do this in a pain or any other reason, you're just going to repeat what you can, right? Or sit it out, or just march on the spot. So my donkey kick is basically bending my knees towards my chest, and then kick my feet out to that extended position. With this, I kind of want to think a few things. Keep the butt strong and keep your stomach tummy strong too because you, when you kick out, you don't want to be arching down. It just puts your back in a pretty vulnerable position. And um, again, I'm not monitoring, I'm not really seeing what you're doing. I just want to make sure that you're safe. So that butt strong, strong stomach will keep you a little bit more stable and less prone to getting hurt. One more. Okay. Shake that out a little bit. 
I'm already sweating. <laughs> I'm usually a relatively active person, but these days, with this coronavirus thing, I haven't really been exercising very much. So actually, this is really helping me maintain a bit of a routine as well, especially with my health. Because um, I kind of like to think it's like an airplane. Put your own oxygen mask first before you can help others. And if you just take some time to take care of yourself, you'll be able to take care of other people a lot much better. Okay, so I'm going to do a full on burpee. We'll see how many we get done. And again, if you can't do a full on burpee, just stay with where you're at. That first progression is fine. Just march on the spot if that's all you can do too. Anything is better than nothing at this stage. So I'm going to try 10 and we'll see how far we get. So jump up, plant the hands, keep the feet out, and then repeat the movement. Again, I like to think that strong symmetry is strong butt as you kick backwards like this kick. Because, like I said, you could put your back in a bit of a ball position. Um, if you're not comfortable doing the full movement, you can just maybe do 10 jumping jacks. But it's really do what you can. And with this back kick, if you want to keep your butt a little bit higher, that will help put your back in a bit more of a stable position as well. Keep your bum a little higher. And um, Protect your back. Like most people that have turned off the cameras, so that's really pretty good. For people who don't want to bear as well, this isn't a tough exercise. It's actually really vigorous. Your heart should be racing pretty decent when we're done. We'll do one more. Yikes. Okay. So hopefully that people feel a bit warmed up now. And again, feel free to comment either during or after. Let me know the difficulty, because again, I, I don't really know who is following us along here. I'm sure some people are super fit. Some people might, might not be that fit. So again, just comments help me kind of give me some direction about where to go with these exercises. Okay, next one is the squat progression. This one where I may use a band later on. I'll go sideways to start and then I'll flip around so you can see the front. So my legs are slightly wider than my hips, probably about my shoulder width or maybe a little bit wider, maybe depending on how you like it. Your feet can be slightly angled, so like a duck. They can be straight, it's really given a personal preference. I just kind of march on the spot a little bit and kind of wherever my feet fall, that's kind of where I'm going to start. So with my squat, I think about driving my hips back versus bending my knees. So I'm almost going to think about sitting back onto a chair and then coming back up. At this stage, again, with the, the crowd, I don't really know who's out there um, in terms of their abilities. I just kind of think I'm going to go as deep as I feel like comfortably can without getting any knee pain or, or back pain. Um, I kind of just say as a rule of thumb, 90s at your knees is pretty good. Um, if you feel you can go deeper, there's no, actually nothing wrong with going deeper. Um, you're just going to that point where you feel comfortable. Again, driving the hips back is really the key. I'm going to try to keep a relatively good alignment from your hips down. So from your hips to my knees to my feet, it should be roughly a straight line. You want to be careful with that knock knee stuff. That was a terrible example, but that's what I'm trying to say. Don't do that. Let's do one more. Um, I like to think about my neck as well. So you're not kind of like arching your neck. You should, your neck should be actually kind of nice and straight in alignment with the rest of your spine. So you shouldn't be kind of looking up as you do your squat. You just shake that out for a second. It's a lot harder talking and exercise here. <laughs> for those of you who've never really done it, I don't usually talk when I exercise either, so it just adds an element of cardiovascular. This is where I'm making my band. Again, if you don't have a band, I'll show you a couple without. I'll show you a couple with, and again, if you have it, you have it. If you don't, without it's just equally as good. Um, the band just adds a little bit extra degree of difficulty. So, like we did yesterday, the kind of the Y shape with my hands. I'm going to try to keep, and again, that tall chest, keep those shoulders down so I'm not shrugging my shoulders up. They should be lots of speed from my shoulders and my, and my elbow or my ears. And again, I'm just going to squat down, getting a little bit of the upper body going too with my squat. And again, I'm trying not to bend forward. So, this is actually a great, the hands overhead is a real good indicator if you're cheating because you'll know that you're starting to, you know that you're starting to cheat because you say you start flexing forward. Um, if you want to add the band, for those of you who have the band, this is how I'm going to use it. 
Um, just to add a little bit of extra shoulder involvement. And you can see my legs are pretty wide here. Again, you don't have to go as wide as me. It's really that personal preference comfort level where you're at. That tall chest. But thinking about keeping the rib cage not from flaring, so you don't want to like over arch your, your rib cage. You should actually have some tightness in your rib cage, um, almost engaging your abs a little bit to make sure you're not over arching that mid back. I see some comments. Like I said, I can't really see your comments right now because I'm too far away, but please, and thank you with the comments. I'll get back to you later, and hopefully we'll have a bit of time for that QA. Yeah, I am trying to get the pro version of the Zoom account, but they, I think, just really overrun right now. And they can't, I don't know why I'm getting an error message with my, when I put my credit card info in. They're supposed to get back to me, but still haven't. Okay, last variation of this, and again, stay with where you're comfortable. I'm gonna do a single leg squat. These are really challenging, so again, if you can follow along with it, great. Stick to a variation where you're feeling comfortable. Maybe go into a door frame if you want by a door, by a chair, by a wall. Okay, so again, same concept really. It's gonna be that straight alignment as best you can from the hip down to the knee through the foot. Driving the hips backwards versus thinking about bending my knee. Um, that tall chest. Again, easier said than done. Again, going as deep as you feel comfortable. These are quite challenging, especially those that are having any knee issues. Um, just be real careful with this. Again, you can go to the depth that you're feeling comfortable. So if you just want to go, you know, a few degrees of bend in your knees, and that's fine. I'm just gonna go maybe five or six on each leg because these, like I said, are quite challenging. I'm still trying to keep that distance from my ears. So again, don't kind of let yourself start shrugging up because that's kind of the tendency as things get hard. My neck position as well. Okay, let's flip around to the other foot. Again, I'm going to go that opposite leg. I'm just going to go side view for people to kind of see what that looks like from the side. I'm still thinking that alignment from my hip through my knee to my foot. I'm still thinking driving my hips behind versus bending my knee. Your knee will just naturally bend. Shoulders, the space between your ears is really important. And just kind of the posturing of your neck. So you're not allowing your neck to kind of arch forward or sticking, protruding your chin. And again, these are quite challenging. So again, just stick with where you're feeling comfortable. So two more. These bulky headphones, I can keep my heart beating these headphones. It's kind of funny. <laughs> Woo, okay. Let's shake that out for a second. Hopefully you guys are feeling the heart rate elevated a little bit, getting that muscle burn activity in your legs, even in your arms and shoulders. Okay, like I said, today I'm doing a little bit more kind of balance work, as you've noticed. Um, so again, just feel free to stay close to the wall, kind of grab a chair that's supportive, so you can kind of lean on a chair or like use it as a support piece. A um, like door frame sometimes a good place to do some of these exercises, just because you got something on either side. Okay, so my next one, um, uh, kind of easy term for them is 747s, but it's basically like a hip So I'm going to just plant on one foot. And I don't know if you've ever seen like, like the old toy where there's a little bird in a cup that bobs its face into the cup. We're going to kind of do that movie. So the, my leg, uh, my kind of swing arm is going to stay as best as I can in the line with the upper body. And then I'm gonna have my arms to the side just for a bit of balance. And I'm gonna have a little bit of a bend in that stationary leg. And I'm just gonna kind of bend forward. Again, the movement's coming from my hip. So if I can think of a, a rod sticking through my hip bones, I'm trying to keep that rotation point where my hips are. That's really what I'm trying to do. Um, again, if it's bugging you, this is one that maybe some people maybe sit out. Uh, repeat an exercise if you can, maybe just walk in the spot. Um, it should be activating your glutes, so you should get a bit of a butt burn, probably a little bit in the hamstring, the back of the thigh. A lot of you might get a little bit of foot activity as well, this your foot works really hard to balance. Um, that's kind of what you want to do. As I 
stand back upright, and I want that's when I want to give my thumb a bit of an extra squeeze, um, just to make sure you're getting some activity down there. Um, again, we're going to make these quite a bit harder. So this is the first variation. Let's go one more. There's so many things to consider, but um, that neck posture is a big one. Flip around. Go from the front, maybe just so you can see the front angle. Um, again, you're not trying to protrude up your chin. Your shin should kind of stay relatively close to my chest. Um, this is kind of like also, if people play golf out there, this thing, you know how you pick up the golf ball or the, the, the hole or the cup, I guess. Um, again, you want to have a little bit of a bend in your knee um, on that stationary leg. And kind of, I also didn't mention yet, but um, keeping the pelvis level. Um, ideally, uh, if you were to balance like a book on your bum in the down position, it should stay on and not slide off um, because you're over rotating. Um, I will add a rotation component to the more the most difficult level of this exercise, um, just to kind of add a little bit of rotation for the hip. Uh, let's do a couple more. Okay, shake that out for a second. Okay, so my next variation, um, like I said, I'm trying to do like really as best I can a full body um, workout as we go. Um, so I try to add a little bit of upper body to these exercises, basically really making them really functional, but also kind of getting more bang for your back party as many calories as you can with each exercise. So my next one is basically as I bend forward, I'm gonna I mean, there's a Y thing that I always like to do, but I'm going to add a Y as I bend forward. So I'm going to start with my right leg here. As I bend forward, I'm going to bring my hands over my head. But you can see I'm bending forward, my hand over my head is actually just pointing 90 degrees out from my hips. With this, I'm going to think again, um, that space between my shoulders. I'm thinking the chin is kind of staying relatively close to my chest. And again, all those other factors about my knees that we bent, my pelvis kind of being level to the ground as best I can. Um, if you have that band and you want to add a little bit more excitement to this exercise, you could add a piece of band into it. Add a huge element of difficulty. So again, if, if people are finding this difficult as it is, I'm not even actually going to use it for this one personally, um, just because it adds a huge different element to the exercise and it allows a lot more upper body focus. But for those that are a little bit more adventurous, go ahead. Maybe for future exercise sessions, um, if you do have a piece of data, then just keep it on hand. If I throw it in, that just adds, again, a little bit more element of difficulty. For those that are ready for it, okay, we're going to switch legs. I'll go head on for this one. Um, having a mat or towel is nice. They said we do some little lying exercise, you've got something to lie on. Um, I may, might even incorporate a chair at some point. So if you do have an armchair, like a wooden kitchen or dining room type chair, a sturdy, maybe have that close by just in case we decide to use that. Um, there's a lot of exercise you can use with a chair. And again, if you're hurting, feeling dizzy, feeling uncomfortable, then again, you're gonna sit these guys out. Again, just repeat one of the previous exercises. Or if you just decide to stand, walk, watch, or, or march on the spot. Let's do one more after this. If you're feeling pinching, obviously, in the shoulders and your neck, obviously not what we're going after. So again, sitting that them out, or just maybe not using the arms, focusing more on the legs and the hips. Okay. I'm getting a little sweaty, so I'm hoping people out there are too. <laughs> not just me. Um, but again, it's the element of talking adds a huge dimension to these exercises more than I kind of thought. Okay, so my last variation of this is a rotation. Um, again, it's quite a challenging exercise, so again, you're going to do what you can. So it's basically the, the exercise we did from one, so like I said, I the 747 here in your airplane. But from here, you're going to try to rotate. Oops, I can't do it myself right now. And then try to tap my knee on the inside, and then come back. So that was a terrible example, let me try that again. So I do my 747, and I'm gonna rotate. 
tap my knee, and back up. Woo! I haven't done these for a while, as you can see, they're hard. If, again, you're feeling you're all over the place, you're falling, you're really just feeling this is not for me, I can't manage it, then obviously you just sit it out, repeat the previous one, do what you can, maybe not rotate so far, just do maybe like a 20 or 30 degree rotation. That's kind of just as good as working the ankle a little bit more, it's gonna work your hip a little bit more. I'm hoping it's not hurting again, you should be in pain. So you try one more of those, just to give people a bit of a try to try it. Um, so you can just flexing forward from the hip. And then add a little bit of element of rotation. It is extremely challenging, so again, don't give up on yourself. As you can see, I even struggle with it, so it's not an easy exercise by any means. Again, I'm just trying to give some variation to those that are a little bit more active out there. So I'm just going to switch my legs. If you notice, switching my legs. You most people will notice they're kind of um, stronger on one side than the other. Very natural. Most people are dominant on one side. So you might notice, oh wow, I can really do this well on one leg and the other leg you're just the pits. So again, don't be too hard on yourself. It is a very difficult exercise, this one. So again, I'm trying to keep nice and straight as best I can. And you guys can be my critiques out there. I'm obviously not very good at this exercise either. So again, I can imagine a lot of you guys are having a bit of trouble with it too. You're just rotating as best you can. Even if it's just a few degrees of rotation, you'll notice that activate your hip quite a lot. So again, you just rotate down maybe five to 10 degrees and then get out of it. You should notice that standing leg hip especially in the glutes and the butt, is really firing, which well, that's exactly what we want. We're just gonna go one more just for fun, and then we're gonna do a bit of a cool down. All right, so let's just finish off with just a couple stretches. I wanna get a bit of a hip stretch here because we did a lot of hip one leg exercises. So I'm gonna grab my mat. Again, if you're finding this exercise, um, this stretch you're gonna try painful, maybe just walk in the spot or just sit it out. It's a pure form of stretch. This is kind of targeting a hip uh, muscle, kind of right deep in the bum. I, so I kind of bend one knee um, in front of me. I'll show you that again, just in case you missed. Um, I'm gonna bend my knee uh, right in front of me, kind of at a 45 degree angle. And then I'm going to try to kind of bring my hips to the floor. You might get a stretch already just with doing that. As you can see, my body is still relatively straight front, even though my knee is going to at this 20, 30, 40 degree angle. If you feel you can handle a little bit more, you can try to lower your chest towards your knee. The knee should be to the, towards the opposite shoulder. So if I'm, for example, if I'm bending my right knee, my left shoulder should be kind of going towards that knee. And that's a bit of a stretch there for the hip. Again, if you're finding that by your knee, by your back, et cetera, then obviously you're gonna sit it up. Try again with the opposite leg. So again, I'm gonna bend that knee to 45. I'm gonna to try to keep my upper body still quite straight in line with that, even though my knee is kind of protruding up to about a 30, 45 degree angle. I'm gonna drop my hips to the floor so my buttocks and on that left side is touching the ground. I'm gonna to try to bring my chest slightly closer towards it. You should get a pretty intense stretch through your bottom. And um, that's exactly what we're trying to do. But to the point where it doesn't hurt, obviously, and your knees are feeling comfortable. Hold it there for a few seconds. There's my half hour timer. Let's do a couple more stretches here to finish off. Sleeping. Okay, so. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, next stretch, I'm just going to do a bit of a uh, stretch for my back, actually. I'm going to lie on my back and just going to let my hands extend over my head and just going to reach from the sky and point my toes. So this is actually a good breathing exercise I like to do, so I'm just going to take some deep breaths while I'm in this outstretched position. I'll just go sideways for some of those people that can't see what I'm up to. I'm just going to almost let my chest open up I'm gonna reach my hands over the head. I'm gonna kind of pump my toes down and just take a few deep breaths. So I like to breathe in through my nose and out through my lips. 
And when I breathe out through my lips, I'm thinking kind of like blowing up earthy kind of like that first lip breathing. In your nose. Oh, like I'm blowing up earthy kind of just go a couple more breaths. And last one, in your nose. And up through the birthday bowl kennels. Last stretch here before we finish off. I'm gonna do a child pose. So from your hands and knees, I'm gonna kind of drop my hips towards my foot, my feet, and then let my hands kind of reach out in front of me. If you're about to do another child's pose, should get a bit of a stretch through the shoulders, maybe through the low back. Now, if you want a little bit more stretch, you can open up your legs a little bit more to get the hips or the bum a little bit closer to the ground. You can kind of walk your fingers forward a little bit to get a little bit more stretch to the shoulders and to the lats. So we'll just stay here for a second or two. Again, if it's bugging anything, your knees are back to earlier, you're going to stop. So again, today's exercise, we're a little bit different. Um, add quite a lot more kind of stability and or balance like exercises to it. Um, slowly get up, because I said I don't want to feel anybody to feel dizzy or lightheaded because I got up quick, pretty quick. Uh, I, like I said, this Zoom call is going to end in a little bit, so hopefully it doesn't cut you off. Feel, feel free to comment um, in the chats. Um, and then if for some reason uh, I didn't get to your questions, please feel free to email um, or give us a call.